One of the great things about owning an RV is you can stay with family and friends, maybe for as long as you like, to really make that a special visit. However, it presents some challenges. Today, I give you three ways to solve sewer, water, and power, and give you two bonus tips at the end. Stay tuned. in today. Really appreciate that. My name is Scott. I'm your host. Welcome to Go Small, Live Large, YouTube channel dedicated to the RV lifestyle, the Class B van lifestyle in particular. In 2017, pretty unhappy with my life in uh, many ways. In 2018, decided to reinvent that. And since 2019, February, I've been full-time in my Winnebago Travado 59GL van. It's a 21-foot camper van on the Ram Promaster chassis, and it's been one of the most amazing life experiences ever in my life. What we do here is we learn together, we share together, and then you decide what's the best way to RV. Whether you're researching, you do part-time, or you do full-time like me, there's no heroism in being a full-timer. It's just the way I choose to RV. What we do here, again, is we learn, we share. You decide what's best for you. Really excited to share this video with you today. This kind of came into light just recently in the last couple months. So I want to share with you three tips on how to turn a long-term family visit into an RV park experience. We're going to take a look at water first, we're going to talk about sewer, and then we're going to talk about electric, and i got two bonus tips for you at the end. Let's go. All right, let's talk water first. So on my 2019 Winnebago Travado 59G floor plan, I have two water inlets. So this one is tank fill, which fills the onboard water tank to its capacity of 18 gallons. This one is city water fill. This is where you connect and you work off of city water pressure. There is an endless supply at that point of water to your rig. There's two downsides in my opinion to this. Number one, it's unsightly and it is unsightly. <laughs> and you might forget it's connected if you're not connected to shore power. And what it does is it gives you a false sense of, hey, I have endless tank supply, which you don't. Uh, my tank sizes is um, 12 of gray, 11 of black. So having endless water gives a false sense of endless waste. And that is not true. So what the Winnebago Travado owners and Wannabe's Facebook group, that great Wikipedia for everything uh, Travado, uh, and I recommend that you fill the tank on board water and then you use the water pump to put pressure into your interior plumbing supply so that you remind yourself when you hit the water and you hear that pump, so it, uh, pump sound that you are using your resource sparingly and then um, you have a little bit more capacity on your tanks. But since we're close to a water source, what I want to do here at the long-term family visit is show you how I've set up for an easy connection for water. Let's take a look at that. Ideally, there is a water faucet spigot nearby to the driveway here at Kyle's parents' house. There's one here on the side of the house. That's the closest. There is none in the front. So what I've done is I've gone to Home Depot and I've purchased a splitter. So the splitter attaches to the faucet, and then this is my connection to fresh water and this goes to the hose that his dad uses to water the garden. So you turn the main water on like this and then you would flip the, the, um, you know, the one side switch to go down like that to put water through the system. I have my filter here. So with the water connected here at the source we have been very clever and ran the hose all the way up and over and then it comes out here, and then we've got a hose reel, and now I have a dedicated water source for the RV. So when I want to fill it, I simply grab my hose, and I connect to the, t to the tank. like that, and then I run and turn on the water. So we're filling the tank. So it's about 10 bucks in cost for the uh, splitter and uh, a hose dedicated, about 50 bucks, and the hose reel holder, about another 10 or $15. I now have dedicated water source that I can fill my uh, tank in really just a couple of minutes. Uh, this is much easier than using the garden hose and going through all that business because it's a plastic hose. 
you'll want to get a dedicated uh, fresh water hose for your rig. When the water runs out of the tank, we know that the water is filled. I'm gonna go turn off the water. The first time this happened, I thought I broke my Travato, and it turns out this is an overflow valve releasing the extra pressure. Okay, with the water situation solved, now we know that that is super easy, fill the tanks, and let's talk about electricity. So I have a Volta equipped, Pier 3, as Winnebago calls it, a lithium ion system. It's a massive energy pack, 8,700 watt hours, 48 volts of juicy lithium energy that powers my everything in the rig, uh, including the air conditioner for up to 10 to 12 hours on about a 50% power cycle. Now this is home base Florida, so it's um, in early February, but today's gonna be 83, it's pretty humid, so it's like summer, endless summer in Florida, yes. So having shore power, I could do a night or two just running off Volta um, with the engine chassis charging the system, but it can be super tedious and just really is not the best way, uh, way to use the system. So. What we've come up with is we've actually installed a 30 amp circuit into the main breaker box. And let me show you that. So at the breaker box here on the side of the house, the main electrical source for the house, what we've had is had an electrician come out and install a 30 amp circuit, running it all the way to the front, similar to the water, to right here. Now this is really nice because I have a, a full 30 amp service feed. There's my surge protector. And I literally just plug my service, electrical service cable into the side of the rig, just as if I would do at an RV park. What's awesome about that is I have power whenever I need it. So I literally, just like I'm at an RV park or a campsite, I plug it in, and that's the best way to use the electrical system in this case. If I was just staying for a night or two, I would not bother with this, or even trying to figure out how to plug in. The option to this is putting in a separate service is to use the garage um, receptacles. And with my Volta system, I'm able to downgrade the amperage ingest into the system so it doesn't trip a breaker. Now, for those of you that have traditional RV electrical systems, that would be a generator, uh, maybe some solar and some standard AGM batteries. I frankly don't know how you guys do it because I haven't studied it and I haven't done it myself. I'm pretty spoiled with Volta. But so with my own private RV setup here, I got water and I got electricity, not too bad, but what about sewer? So let's talk about sewer. So the sewer connection on my Travado is right back here, and sewer is really a challenge, whether you're in residential or a commercial park, and here's why. So the challenge with sewer is, unlike electrical and water, the piping and the tubing is really flexible to get um, those resources to the endpoint. Sewer, a very different situation. My understanding of how a sewer drain works is it works on gravity. So everything flows out of the house into a low point and into the street. And unless you're in space, that's kind of how the stuff gets out of the house and into the sewer system. To do that here would take a lot of digging. Let me show you. So carefully hidden here in the garden is the sewer clean out, right? Every house has one at least, maybe even two. And this goes out to the street this way toward the van. But to get access to this, what you would have to do is find where the sewer line runs. That's kind of issue number one. And then start digging up the garden to get probably another connection point here. Be on the wrong side sort of anyway. Um, so here's how we solve that problem because we're not gonna put in a sewer drain here because uh, it's a long way back there and it's a big project. So what we've decided to do is locate a RV dump station connection nearby. There is one here in the Lake Worth, Boynton Beach, Florida area, which is about 12 miles south of West Palm Beach and about 40, well, 30 minutes, 30 miles north of Fort Lauderdale. There's a, a park called John Prince Park, $15. They have a dump station open from 7 a.m. to really, I think about 9 p.m., maybe six for sure for daylight hours. And you can go in there and empty your tank. And what I'm doing is I'm emptying about once a week and for 15 bucks, so $60, let's see, 15, 30, 60 bucks a month, I have the sewer problem solved. So what I would recommend doing is working on your electric, do the water for sure, and for sewer, unless you have a clean out that is right in front, sorry the wind's blowing my tripod in the tree, is um, find a, a sewer uh, dump station that is close to you that you can access um, on a frequent basis. Uh, again, depending on the size of your tanks, you may need to go twice a month, 
maybe even once a month, depending on how you're using your RV. Hey, if you're getting anything out of this, I sure would appreciate a thumb up. That helps others find the channel, helps me know you liked it, and helps YouTube share it out. Comment below. Um, anything here, uh, new information? Uh, would this be something you'd be interested in doing with your, uh, to extend a family visit? And um, subscribe to the channel. If you like van life content, if you like RV content, if you like going to cool places, meeting great people, uh, getting tips and tricks on RVing, whether you're researching part-time or full-time, uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Be part of our success. I'd love that. Let's talk about the next step. One of the great things about staying with family is you get to spend a lot of time with them, but you're kind of in their environment. So here, in this case, Kyle's mom and dad like to have their house pretty warm. 79 degrees, it's 82 degrees outside, a little breezy, but pretty humid. So the, while the temperature is about the size, it is a little less humid in here, but that is way too warm for me. So environmental concerns of comfort would be one reason. Another is, and that would be using the restroom. Yes, well, it's nice to have a sink, toilet, and shower in a traditional way. What I find is I really prefer to be in my own space doing these facility items in my own rig. Now I know I'm super weird in this, but in a pinch, this works great. But if I'm staying here for two or three, up to four weeks where I have been lately, then um, coming in here and doing my business on a daily basis is not attractive to me. I have my own toilet, I have my own shower, I have my own sink, I have everything I need in my RV coming in here and kind of using their space, her space in particular, um, I just feel like I'm, I'm intruding. I kind of do my own stuff in my own germs. I know I'm weird, but um, one of the greatest things about RVing is I can do everything I need in my rig and not have to rely on these services. Now, while I might be a little squeamish on using the restroom facilities, I am not squeamish about using these facilities. Yes, that would be laundry. One of the great things about staying at family is you can catch up on all your laundry um, at no charge. And that is cool, I must say. I really do appreciate that. Laundromats, okay. RV park laundromats, okay. But this is really convenient. Today I washed all my rugs. Um, you can wash the rugs in your, in your rig. Um, wash them in a, in a tumbler style like this, not an agitator. Um, do not dry them at the end, dry them, uh, air dry them. And even the rug in my Travato cab, that's kind of an odd size and large, watch that in here this morning. So just, again, one of the great things about um, staying with family is you can use their laundry facilities pretty easily and maybe even get some free soap. Jump back in the rig. One more thing that I am not squeamish about using and that is using the water for washing the van. Um, I wash my van somewhat frequently, although with my wrap, I've noticed I really haven't had to wash it as often because dirt doesn't stick to it. Certainly bugs don't stick, which is awesome. Um, so laundry and van wash, I'm totally okay using those facilities. So you might be asking why I'm even staying in the in-laws driveway for what's now approaching four weeks. Uh, so as you know, I live full-time in my Winnebago. Um, we have a big announcement that's been kind of leaked already and that is uh, Kyle has bought his own RV. It's currently in the dealership getting some work done. We're on week four for that. Uh, so he's actually staying in here with me for those four weeks because he doesn't want to camp out with his mom and dad. Um, long story. And so what we've been doing is, again, using the two beds in the, in the Travato here. He stays in the back bed, I stay where I'm currently am sitting talking with you, and that is in the front bedroom. One of the great things about this floor plan, the 59G, is having two four by six beds for two normal size-ish adults, even on the bigger size, to sleep comfortably. So while we're at, kind of parked, not roaming around, we are fully using the van as a living quarters. But, there are some things to know. And those things are about setting expectations. My family loves it when I come visit, but I have to kind of remind them of these expectations. And I just want to have a quick conversation with you about that because it can be a big deal. I'm not sure when you visit your family, but they probably expect you to move into their house essentially when your house is parked outside, that would be your RV. I make it super clear to them that I will not be sleeping in their bedroom. I may use their restroom facilities, but probably not. I would love to take on some water, maybe even empty my tanks if the sewer drain cleanout is uh, accessible. And I'll definitely be using laundry. I'll definitely be washing the van, but I will not be moving in and staying with them uh, basically 24 seven. I treat it as if I am in the area and I show up for dinner. I might show up for a coffee in the morning, might show up uh, for a movie night or something like that. Maybe go shopping together, just go have lunch at a nice little uh, cafe someplace. But I am uh, in my own house, on their property, 
connected to resources. I have my own music. I have my own temperature control. I'm kind of at my own as I would like to be. And by having that conversation up front around expectations, people's feelings aren't hurt on either side. And I tell them this when I'm rolling before I get there, when I arrive and during my visit, and I just have found that it works much better. No feelings are hurt. I can actually stay longer by doing it in this manner. It really is a lovely way to travel in an RV. Even though I'm not technically traveling, I'm still getting all the benefits out of my RV living in their driveway. So that is my bonus for you. Have a conversation about expectations. And certainly those expectations might change from one or two nights to one to two or four weeks. That's a very different way to roll. And expectations need to be set appropriately, I think, before, during, and um, maybe even after. Maybe they really enjoy that kind of an RVing experience. And maybe they become a boondocker welcome host. Wouldn't that be cool? So as we mentioned during the quick tour of resources is to, let's talk about the cost. There you can see I got van life Luke with me. Luke, you wanna say hi to everybody, Luke? Oh, this is the part where you pay your paycheck, Luke. Look at him, what a handsome boy. Handsome boy, kitty, Luke. Van life Luke, hi everybody. Subscribe to the channel, please. Thumb up, paw up if you like this. Comment below, what do you think of this? And subscribe, please subscribe for Luke. He would love to have you part. Luke, say subscribe. Luke, subscribe please. Oh yes, Luke. Okay, now I need to subscribe, he said the word. <laughs> okay, so just rounding out the cost. So let's say you install a 30 amp circuit into the main breaker box. I'm gonna guess it's re re between $500 and $1,000 depending on your area permitting. Um, electro, uh, you know, engineer costs, etc. Um, super simple, only take a couple hours. Let's say it costs $500 for that. Well, if you're staying for more than a couple nights, you're probably gonna be finding an RV park, and those are about 50 bucks a night. So for $500, you can, after 10 nights, you've paid the bill for that. And now you can stay as long as you want. The splitter for the water was about 10 bucks, and for the hose and hose reel, that total bill is about $60 for that. So let's just round it up to $600 and at, uh, let's just call it 60 bucks a night for easy math because I'm living in a van guy. Uh, that's 10 nights, it's 60 bucks at an RV park and you can stay in your family's driveway for as long as you like, as long as they permit. And you'll probably find an extended visit more practical, more enjoyable because you're staying in your own space but have the resources and you're not feel like you're intruding like I would at that point. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I've been thinking about it a long time. So that's how we roll here. We learn together, we share together. Did you get anything out of that? Uh, we just wanna help you be a better RVer, whether you're still researching, you're part-time, or you are full-time like me. Until we see you soon, I wish you to journey on. Thanks for watching. Oh, deep. Oh, okay. Now you can go. <laughs>